This podcast was recorded before the COVID-19 outbreak. We hope you enjoy this armchair traveling experience. So it's coming up on the left, right by this, this opening in the divider. Um, you'll see the pipes, and that's where one of the owl pair live. So we'll just slow down a little bit as we go by. We don't want to create a traffic jam. Right here. But you see? Um, they're not, yeah, they're not out, but um, there's a pair that live there. Hey, it's Shellcast, the official podcast of the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. Come along as we discover the best of Lee County, Florida. In this episode, we visit Cape Coral's Burrowing Owl Festival and find out why this unique bird is so special to the city. I'm your host, Jackie Parker, and here's your sound guy, Ray Saraceno. Hello. Lee County is located along Southwest Florida's Gulf Coast, about two hours south of Tampa. In this episode of Shellcast, we're taking a drive over to Cape Coral, so that means we get to take one of the bridges that span the Caloosahatchee River from Fort Myers. Well, we don't want to keep you in suspense. Here's a recording of what a burrowing owl sounds like. We got this little guy's call off YouTube, so you'd be sure to have an idea of the sounds that they make. It's a warm and windy, sunny Saturday in late February, a perfect day for the 18th annual Burrowing Owl Festival. About 3,000 visitors came to Cape Coral's Rotary Park for the event. The festival included several tents full of nature exhibits, there was a butterfly house, and there were bus tours to see where the owls live in Cape Coral. When we met Beverly Saltonstall, one of the volunteers with the Cape Coral Friends of Wildlife, she was showing festival goers video from her home webcam that's pointed at burrowing owls nesting in her front yard. More on that in a minute. Beverly's a longtime volunteer with Cape Coral Friends of Wildlife, and she talks about why the burrowing owl is such a big deal in Cape Coral. Well, for the most thing, um, these are a wonderful tourist attraction. Um, they, people have come from all over the world to see these birds uh, for various reasons. One, they're out during the day. Most of the time, if people go on an owl hunt, they're out at 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, and you can't see them because it's dark. These owls are out all day long, so they're a tourist tra attraction. I have people from South Africa, the Philippines, from Canada, the U.K., all over the world coming here to specifically see this uh, these owls. Plus, we are the epicenter of the owl population, uh, probably of the world. Um, we have the most of any place you know, in, the, in the country, for sure. So this podcast is actually, it's called Shellcast, and it is, it's one more thing that people can do, um, you know, they can use as a resource to plan their trips to Lee County. And it sounds like this is perfect because nature is what we promote. It is something that you, know, you can only see here. And what, what is it about the burrowing owls that make them so unique here? They have a cuteness factor of plus 10. Yeah. They are adorable. They're tiny. Um, they have these beautiful, beautiful yellow eyes, and they're very inquisitive. They love people. Uh, not that you could get close enough to touch them, but when, you, when they hear us, they'll come out. Um, they love to watch parades. Uh, we'll see them all up on their perches if there's a parade going on or something. So they're, they're just an endearing little bird. So many people use them in their advertising because they are so cute. So that's probably one of the biggest draws of them. And how, how, what's their lifespan? About eight years. We had one that lived in a bar, and he was for sure eight years old. But that's about the max eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. So... I have a camera that I watch my dog on when I'm at work, and you just showed me your camera, and it's the owl cam. Mm -hmm. So you've got an owl in your front yard? I do. I do have two of them. I have, I have two of them, and there's two next door that are living in our swale, our little drainage ditch. So I just put a new burrow in, hoping that those will come over and live in a suitable home instead of where they might get flooded. So. <laughs> um, what, what kind of sound do they make? They sound almost like a uh, morning dove. It's like a cuckoo, cuckoo, and that's the male calling for a mate. Uh, and it's usually during the night and in front of my guest room uh, window, and they're going to fricassee the owl and me because he does it all night until he finds a mate. <laughs> and then uh, the um, there's an alarm call, like a chick, 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 uh, to alarm the, pa the spouse or the babies to get in out of danger. 
And then the babies make a sound like a rattlesnake, so for protection. So if you hear a rattlesnake coming out of that burrow, it's probably the babies. And the babies also make like this cheep, cheep, cheep sound, and that that's they're looking for food. Okay. And, uh, so they do make they're quite vocal. Okay. What um. What drew you to to this bird? Well, I. When I moved here from New Jersey, I wanted to join Audubon because I've always been interested in the outdoors from Girl Scouts on, and it was on my bucket list to join Audubon, and I'm an early bird, <laughs> so I was riding around town to see where I lived, and um, I just, there was all of a sudden this little bird sitting at the side of the road. I was saying, what in the world is that? I've never seen a bird like that. And uh, there was a protected species sign next to it and these pipes and everything. And I just kind of filed it, and within several days, there was an ad in the paper from the city looking for volunteers to help out with the burrowing owls. So I looked it up and says, oh, that's what I saw. So I went to the first meeting um, from the city and, and got involved right off the get-go from, from that. So I've been with, the, with what became Cape Pearl Friends of Wildlife since day minus 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've been with them the whole time. The Burrowing Owl Festival also had a tent containing a cross-section diorama of what the leggy little owl's homes look like. I'm here with uh, Bernadette McNee, and she is part of the borough maintenance team. And the, so there's this tent over here, and there's a diorama. There shows a little cutout of an actual size of a burrowing owl. What are people looking at over here? It, it actually shows, shows the side of what an owl burrow actually looks like. Okay. So you have the, the mound with the dirt. And then the, the burrow goes another eight feet or so underground, and at the very back of that burrow is where they lay their eggs. And a lot of people think they have an in and an out, but that's, you know, not true. You can see that at the end of that burrow is where they lay their eggs. And they dig that burrow. They dig that about eight feet long. They just take their little feet, their talons, and they have to keep backing up and backing up to get all the dirt out, and they could pretty much do that in about a night. Really? Because it's sand here. It's sand, yeah. So it's easy it's to dig. Easy digging. And they're leggy for owls. Yeah, yeah. And when they're determined, and it's nesting season, that's what they do. Yeah. yeah. And do they come back and, and do they use that, that um, burrow every time, or do they go yeah, to they, others? Well, they nest just the one time a year. And the original parents will come to that bur back to that burrow to read us. Mm -hmm. um, if something happens to one or either one of them, uh, that the kids might take it over. Mm -hmm. And nesting season is when? Middle of February to middle of July. Okay. So they are pairing up now. Um, and, you know, the owls don't travel far from where they were born, so they're always in the same area. Mm -hmm. They keep it local, don't they? They do. And they cannot be moved, no matter what anybody tells you. You know, when a burrow is destroyed or removed because of a, a home construction, a lot of people seem to think that they relocate the owls to another site. And all they do is remove the burrow, and the owls are left homeless and have to find another place to live, which is the sad part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And why is it important for people to come to the festival? It, it makes, I think, makes them more aware of the wildlife and the environment, especially here at Cape Coral. You know, there's so many vendors, um, environmental groups, uh, small animal groups, and um, I, it, it gives them a, a scope of what's going on in, in Cape Coral and Lee County. So uh, what better way to showcase it than at the Burrowing Owl Festival? They're our neighbors, aren't they? They are our neighbors, yep. And we have to, and especially, you know, with the kids. The kids are free, so they can come. There's some craft projects for the kids. Um, so it's a great learning for uh, the kids as well. Mm -hmm. And how close can you get to them? So here we are. We're, what, six <laughs> feet from from this borough? Well, from this demonstration. The demonstration. Oh, no oh it's a demonstration. Here. Okay, all right, all right, got it. <laughs> um you shouldn't get any close. We usually mark the burrows out with a with a ten foot radius. Okay. Where the poles are. You should stay at least that ten feet away. Uh huh. Um, if it, if they start backing up and hissing at you, you know you're too close. But you can't get a good picture of them because if you get too close, they're gonna 
Let's go down the burrow. The safest distance is just at least 10 feet, 15 feet away. Okay. Yeah. Because the residents and, and the visitors tell us about all the new burrows, we'll go out and mark them. We stake them out if they're on empty lots, and then we get a GPS point. And we report the, those findings to the city of Cape Coral, and they in turn uh, post it on their map, their city map. So if anybody wants to build on the lot, uh, it's already flagged on the property that there's owls there. Um, and that's one of our, one of the things we do. Our group also goes out on Wednesdays and we have a map of all the boroughs. Uh -huh. And they check to make sure that they're staked out properly. They stake, uh, they check to make sure that um, we have perches. There's a sign if necessary. They make sure that the borough is open. And they just put a little flagging tape on the borough, on the PVC, um, just to know, let, let us know that they were there mm -hmm. and it's being checked out. What is it, um, why do you like burrowing owls? What is your fascination with them? Um, when I first moved down here 15 years ago, there was one on my property. I had no idea what it was. Uh, I came to, I think, my first burrowing owl festival here in 2005. I got this t-shirt then, <laughs> and I still have it. Nice. It looks good. Uh, well, you don't need a, a sweatshirt too much you really in this don't. area, no. so it lasted pretty well. But then I joined the group, and I just kind of liked the maintenance end. And originally what we did was we'd actually go out and uh, weed whack all the, all the burrows that were on the lots. Because once the, once the weeds start growing, the owls can't get back into the burrow. Uh -huh. So we would weed whack them all, go around the city. It would take us about a year to do the city. Uh -huh. And by that time, you know, you know, all these burrows weren't getting cleaned. Yeah. And finally the city took that job over. So they are now doing that big part of the maintenance. And they do it... Um, they go out, I think, in June to December. Uh -huh. They don't go out during nesting season, which is now. Um, and then they, they do it probably about six times a year. Uh -huh. So the burrows are nicely trimmed. Great. Great. Okay, let's get back to Beverly's bus tour, where she is showcasing the homes of the burrowing owls. We're learning a lot about the owls and PVC pipe. She's telling a school bus full of people to look on the ground, not in the trees, for a wooden perch marked on the corners by four pieces of white PVC pipe. And this is a familiar sight on empty lots and in the yards of Cape Coral homeowners. So when you see this little perch stuck in the ground and four pieces of white PVC pipe, you are looking at where a burrowing owl's home is located. So we're gonna go to my house first. Um, the ultimate plan for these, bur these uh, birds is to have them live on people's front lawns because um, they, most of them live on the empty lots right now and as Cape Coral builds out, the empty lots will be gone. So it's very easy to put a burrowing owl on your front lawn, except for the fact they can't dig through this grass. On the left, there's a stick sticking up on my front lawn. Go. And again, uh, you know, this is a bad, t a bad time, but that's what an artificial burrow looks like. This is made out of PVC pipe and a drainage, di drainage, um, you know, a, a little box where the valves go. So um, we are teaching people how to put starter burrows in. Um, you need to get rid of that grass first before they'll they'll come. But the owls will come <laughs> uh, most of the time. So um, Marco Island, right, oh, Marco Island right now is paying $250 to um, their residents if they put a burr on. We're going to turn around in the cul-de-sac and come back again so the other side can see it. There's your okay. owl cam. I do. I have a camera on them. Uh, it's a night vision camera so I can watch them at night because they're much more active at night. Uh, during the day, the male sits out there all day guarding the burrow and the female comes in and out. Um, but there's not a whole lot of activity during the day. Uh, but at night, you see them flying in and out. 
Yeah, that's when they do their, most of their feeding. Although they are, they are technically diurnal birds, which mean they hunt during the day. But I'm not so sure that the, uh, the, the biologists have them living in their front yard so they can see what they do. Because they tell me that they're not out before two weeks of age out of the burrow, and I sure see them out sooner. Because <laughs> I have a picture of Mama saying, what are you doing coming out of that burrow? So um, the people that bought this area went all over the world selling these properties. Uh, we have a lot of German people living here. Uh, they went to Wisconsin, California, Canada, you know, all over. So those people were not coming down on weekends to cut their grass. So the city was getting pretty ratty looking. So they went out and bought these lot mowers to mow the grass. And they would come in a little swipe of the... Uh, across this the property and send the people a bill for seven bucks and everybody was happy except fish and wildlife um, because these guys could not see the owls because when you get to see them close up they match the ground they're a beige color just like the sand they have spots on them just like the little purple flowers that that grow in the weeds um, so they're very difficult to see and plus, the, the guys that were driving these things did not know that these burrows can be 10 foot long. So, even if they missed an owl, they could still be driving over the chamber where the babies were. So, Fish and Wildlife came down and said, you know, you have to do something about that. So, at the time, the entire city council and anybody to do with politics in the city were either developers, real estate people, builders or anything to do with making the city bigger and, and bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, they um, they didn't like the owls because they thought you couldn't build a house on the property. So they would let them, some of the people would go out in the middle of the night and close up burrows if they wanted to sell a property and stuff. So it, it was pretty uh, pretty ugly. So one, one lady in the city liked the owls. Her name was Sue Scott. Well, you like the owls, you go take care of them. So they gave her a hammer and some stakes that says, go out and mark them. Okay, so on the right here, left, left, <laughs> left, is uh, some burrows. And um, this is um, this is occupied. There's a couple owls that live here. We'll, uh, we'll go around the corner and hopefully we'll see some out here. Yeah, just park, um, just past the condos there. So visitors to the area you know people who are just going to be here for a few days a week or whatever what what can they do to um to help the burrowing owls drive slow okay <laughs> that's one of the biggest things uh -huh. um we most birds if you scare them off they fly up into a tree or something these owls since they live on the ground will fly low to the burrow so a lot of them get hit by cars so we just you know be aware especially if you see one of the pvc pipes in the area just to be careful um, when you're driving. And, and it's four four PVC pipes? Yes. Okay. Four, four. What was that? That, that was a burrowing owl <laughs> on his phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It was ringtones of yeah. burrowing owl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my ear, too. <laughs> this is not... Is that you? Is that you? <laughs> oh. Awesome. Yeah, this is not suitable <laughs> habitat here at the park for burrowing owls because they don't like trees, so... Uh, there wouldn't be a burrowing owl here necessarily. Yeah. But, um, um, and about that head tilt, Beverly explains the hows and whys. They have binocular vision like we do, and um, they need to practice depth perception. So, like, um, the, but the babies need to tilt their heads in order to learn that. You know, it's simple as that. And uh, it's cute. It is. Oh, it's adorable. But they have, um, they have twice as many vertebrae in their neck which allows them to do this, both turn their head you know, around to 270 degrees around, but they also have the ability to turn their head 180 degrees the other way, up and down. So they get a really big vision, of, a line of vision because of their necks and stuff. So they're, they're programmed. They have blood vessels in their necks that have chambers in them. So when they turn their neck, these chambers fill with blood. Like if we do that, the the blood vessels compressed and we would pass out. There's open so they get blood to their brain so they can turn their head all the way around. So it's a matter of um, them being able to turn their head in a great distance. That they, you know, the babies like are, are able to do it more so than the adults because they're much more flexible. So where can you find burrowing owls in Cape Coral? 
Our bus tour took us over to Skyline Boulevard, Mohawk Parkway, and Pelican Boulevard. We also saw nests at the Pelican Baseball Complex, and Beverly said the owls sit there outside their underground burrows and have been known to watch some baseball. The complex is located at uh, Pelican Boulevard and Southwest 42nd Terrace. So next time you're in the neighborhood, drive by and see if they're there. That's it for this episode of Shellcast. Thank you to the volunteers at the Cape Coral Friends of Wildlife for their help with this podcast. To learn more about their group, visit ccfriendsofwildlife.org. Thank you to Ray Saracino, as always, for your excellent tech. And thanks to our colleague, Courtney Hersel for the theme music. Shellcast, the official podcast of the Beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel, is produced by the Lee County Visitor and Convention Bureau in Fort Myers, Florida. Shellcast is available wherever fine podcasts are downloaded and at fortmyers-sanibel.com. If you have any questions or suggestion for an episode of Shellcast, please email us at shellcastthepodcast at gmail.com. My name's Jackie Parker. Thank you for listening to Shellcast. We'll catch you again next time.